Hey, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you guys clicking on that video. Today, we are looking at compliment getters. Fragrances that have gotten me compliments recently on different occasions. I'm gonna tell you what those occasions were, where I was, what the fragrance is, and why I think it's a guaranteed compliment getter. We're looking at three today. The first one is gonna be a higher budget niche fragrance. The second is going to be a mid-level designer fragrance. And of course, we're gonna make room for a cheapie. Let's get into the list. So this first one, I was actually at a birthday party, a friend's birthday party. I had happened to see a friend that I went to school with and I hadn't seen her in a long time, uh, but we gave each other a hug. We were excited to see each other. And the first thing she said to me was, You smell amazing. What is that? And I, it, for whatever reason, and I don't know if this happens to you guys, but when I get complimented, for whatever fragrance I'm wearing. A lot of times, obviously, they ask, what are you wearing? I forget, I, it, it's weird. I, I'm, maybe it's just a split second sort of little panic that I'm like, oh, what am I wearing? And then I remember, and then usually I'll tell them, but uh, I don't know, is that just me? Let me know in the comments if that's just me. But so the fragrance that she smelled on me immediately and is one of my most complimented in my collection, fragrance I'm talking about, Creed Aventus. Just a great atomizer. In the air, beautiful scent. I love Creed's Aventus. I've talked a little bit about this in previous videos. My thoughts on Creed's Aventus. It gets a lot of hate. It gets a lot of criticism. Many iterations many batches. The batch actually on this, if anyone cares, is 21P01. So 2021. And I love it. It's I've smelled older batches of Creed's Aventus and there are certainly differences from batch to batch. And you can go down a rabbit hole uh, when talking about the different varying batches and, and whatnot. And my opinion is sort of remain the same that this was the first fragrance that I smelled that was a niche fragrance and it sort of opened up another world to me that was maybe four or five years ago and at the time I didn't like it I and and I was sort of like that's the hype this is what everyone's talking about so it wasn't until I had an opportunity to get a bottle at a good price that I had added it to the collection. And prior to that, I didn't own any clones or dupes of it. I had smelled them, but again, I didn't really like it enough to say, yeah, I'm gonna buy a clone of Creed's Aventus and then wear it and you know, whatever. So when the time came where I could get a bottle for a great price, I grabbed it to add to the collection. And as I had time to live with it and spend with it, I really grew to love it. And uh, it's become one of my more versatile worn scents. I do like to wear it primarily during spring and summer months, although it does lend itself to every season. You could wear this pretty much anywhere in any situation. But there's just something about it that is so unique. And, and I'm talking as unique in the sense that I understand that there's a lot of things that smell like this now. I've tried the Explorers, the Club de Nuits, the English Laundry dupe of it, and they all, without getting into those fragrances, they come up short when it comes to Creed's Aventus, and for a couple different reasons in my opinion, but I still think this is a fragrance worth owning in 2022. Uh, it is fantastic in my opinion, and if you're going to spend money on any of the creeds i say spend it on aventus it's one of the and there are other good creeds but this this in my opinion and i've smelled a lot of them uh most of them uh royal oud i tried and i i it had terrible longevity on my skin so i don't know if that's just a newer batch or or what but i get way better longevity from this 2021 batch of creeds aventus than i got on royal oud although i do love the smell of royal oud I would not suggest purchasing it at roughly a $300 price point if I didn't think you were gonna get your value from it. Uh, it absolutely holds a place in my collection and it should in many others. What do I get when I smell this? So I get a sweet, fruity, woody, smoky opening. Famously, pineapple is a note in this. 
It's wonderful. You can pick it out right away. I don't want to get into batches and what I think this batch is, but I get a nice mix of that fruitiness, that sweetness, along with the smokiness from the birch. Although I would say this one is a bit more fruit forward than other batches that I've smelled, older batches. I also get sort of a fresh muskiness to this. Very manly, very masculine, and a slight citrus as well. Love it. I think that combination of the black currant, the pineapple, patchouli, birch, I mean, there. This is such a well-blended fragrance that it is notoriously smooth, rounded, lovely. And then as it begins to dry down, you get some of the vanilla in the base. It has a bit of a creaminess along with that oak moss and the ambergris. Lovely, love it. We'll always have this in my collection. Gets me compliments all the time. There's a reason why it's a lot of people's number one fragrance or go-to fragrance. As far as longevity, I get about eight hours longevity when I wear this and I get a really solid two hours of projection. This is also notorious for making you go nose blind to the scent for whatever reason. Uh, it is one of those scents that you just, you don't smell it on yourself, but hours later, hours after wearing it, you will get a compliment and unsolicited, unexpected and just be like, wow, you can smell that. It is just that type of scent. So yes. For the niche higher budget pick for most complimented fragrances in my collection, Creed Aventus. So this next scent, I actually was complimented recently. I went to a Christmas party and I wore this fragrance and I probably got four compliments that night for this particular fragrance. I It came from both men and women, friends of mine, and people that don't even necessarily know that I do fragrance reviews, uh, they just said, uh, you smell great. Uh, what is that? That's something like I've never smelled before. It's awesome. Really big hit. And I was surprised because, you know, I did maybe want to say I did about four sprays and uh, two, four, yeah, four sprays, couple on my shoulders. Uh, I was wearing a sweater, but uh, yeah, just Again, same kind of situation as the Aventist. I was just went in for a hug with people or I was just in a circle conversation talking and someone noticed it. Uh, you know, they were within three feet of me. So fragrance I'm talking about. Again, this is for the mid-level designer. Most compliment in my collection. One of the most compliment in my collection. And that is Pierre Havan from Mugla. This is so good in the air. And I think that's why it was such a big hit that night because it it's just one of those scents that the sillage of this is beautiful. It's not even the best when you smell it up close. Uh, I don't know if anyone else does this, but I always spray my hand because I like to be sort of reminded of what I'm wearing. And this in the air is lovely. It's, it's one of the best sillages of my entire collection. It leaves a beautiful trail. It's perfect for the cooler nights, uh, winter nights, fall nights, fall days. This is definitely a transitional scent in the sense that you could wear it during the day and then come home, put a little more on or put it in a decant and go out that night. It will work both day and night, but just sweet honey tobacco. You get that note of cherry in this. It's almost like it's a bit medicinal on first spray. And again, like I said, that's mainly because I'm smelling it off a strip or up close, but I've gotten the sillage of others wearing this in the past and it's just beautiful. It's just one of those scents that the way it's constructed lends itself to a wonderful sillage, beautiful trail. It's great. You're gonna get compliments from this, I guarantee it. This is one of those scents that someone will love it. They're gonna smell it, think it's great. Just a sweet honey tobacco vanilla fragrance that is warm and spicy and almost a bit powdery to my nose, but I love it. So good. Pure Havan from Mugler. So this last fragrance, which would fall under the budget cheapy category for most complimented in my collection, I really wanted to include because this is one of my wife's favorites. 
that I wear. And I will be honest, she is a tough critic, very tough. And there's not a hell of a lot that she really loves from a fragrance standpoint, which makes things tough on a guy who reviews fragrances and owns a lot of fragrances and it's not the best, but she likes this one, which is why I wanted to include it. And the fragrance I am talking about, Versace Pour Homme. A lot of juice comes out from that atomizer when you spray this. Mm. So damn good. This this will this is a classic in my opinion. Liked by pretty much everybody. And my wife's not the only one who has complimented me on this. I wore I wear this a lot in the summertime. And it's just a super fresh, aromatic, fresh spicy. You got beautiful citrus up top from the lemon and bergamot. You have some neroli, some rose. This clary sage, geranium, cedar in this, and just this lovely tonka bean, musky dry down. But that opening is one of the most beautiful, likable, mass pleasing openings of any fragrance that I've ever smelled. And there's a reason that this thing is just a classic, in my opinion, it's a masterpiece. Drawbacks to this fragrance, longevity isn't great, which is understandable with a freshie but it's not terrible either. I get about five to seven hours, uh, but this one I don't mind re up. If I have to, I'll bring a little decant with me if we're going out for the day. It also can transition to the night quite nicely. It's just so fresh and uplifting and bright and puts you in a good mood whenever you smell it. I have a lot of scent memory attached to this as well. So it's one of those scents that if you wear it during a time, uh, you're doing something that is creating memories of family or friends. Chances are when you go back to this one, it's going to remind you of those times. It just has that sort of profile and it's memorable. It's to me a sophisticated scent. It, this guy who wears this has his crap together. He's in a good position. He's clean. He's well put together. But this scent really anybody could wear, but you're gonna smell fantastic. You're gonna get compliments. It's that simple. This thing is a beast when it comes to compliments. I honestly can't think of another freshie off the top of my head that really competes with this in terms of compliments. It's just a classic scent that people might recognize, but it's almost as if you're not wearing anything at all in terms of a cologne. It's just so fresh and clean and aromatic. It smells like you're sort of blending in with, like if you're outside, you're blending in with your surroundings and you just smell great. It's it's that good and I love this one. Versace Pour Homme. So that's all the fragrances we have today. I plan on doing this a lot more. My most complimented fragrances, different price points for each one and actual stories behind compliments, where I was, who, who gave me the compliment. I think that would be pretty cool to include that information. So let me know in the comment section below if you guys liked today's video. I truly appreciate the feedback. We are so close to 500 subscribers. Once we hit 500, I plan on doing a giveaway. With all that being said, I'll see you in the next video.